Hello cybersecurity professionals, welcome to AV Cyberactive. Today we're going to discuss malware analysis and how to use MITRE ATT&CK framework to fight against a ransomware attack. Let's begin with defining malware analysis and its textbook definition. So malware analysis is important because it helps security operations and forensic team rapidly to detect and prevent bad actors, attackers from gaining persistence within the organization. Okay, the keyword here is persistence. Now there are three types of malware analysis that we can do. First one, static analysis. Second, dynamic analysis. And the third and the most popular nowadays is reverse engineering the malware. Let's study them one by one. First one, that is static analysis. So what's happening here? Static analysis, it examines the files for signs of malicious intent without executing the program. Remember this, it runs the analysis without executing the program. This form can also call for a manual review by an IT professional after the initial examination to conduct further analysis as to how the malware interacts with the system. Let's take some examples here. So when you do a static malware analysis, what is it that it's looking for? These are the five answers to the questions you're looking for. So when you do the structural analysis, you want to ask, are there structural anomalies within the embedded shellcode or abnormal macros? or any executable program that would not normally be present in any document of this type. Does the document have any missing or any added segments? Are there any embedded files? Are there any encryption, fingerprinting, or any other suspicious capabilities that is hiding? And the last one, is there anything about the document that just looks odd? So what it's really trying to look for is the errors that do not manifest themselves until a disaster occurs weeks, months, or years after a software release. But nevertheless, static analysis was only a, a first step in a comprehensive software quality control regime. Next one, dynamic analysis. To give you a visual representation, we take an example of a sandbox. And what happens in a sandboxed environment stays within the sandboxed environment and it does not affect any other programs. Hence, anything that's running or any malware codes that running in that environment is pretty much self-contained while the software is running. So we can say that dynamic analysis relies on a closed system, also known as a sandbox, to launch the malicious program in a secure environment and simply watch to see what it does. And hence, this type of environment simulates an entire host or including CPU, memory and other devices to continuously observe all the actions the malicious object or the code can take. This automated system enables professionals to watch the malware in actions without letting them infect any of their systems. Third one, reverse engineering. That's the most interesting nowadays and it's becoming increasingly popular. Now, reverse engineering a malware involves disassembling a software program. Through this process, the binary instructions are converted into code mnemonics so that the engineers can look at what the program does and how it impacts a system. Only by knowing its details are engineers then able to create solutions that can mitigate the program's intended malicious effects. So reverse engineer or also called as reverser will use a range of tools to find out that the program is uh, propagating through a system and what it is engineered to do. I've made another video on the types of malwares and tried explaining them in detail. Do check out this video in the cards. Now the next portion of the video is is being requested quite a few times by my colleagues. So here it is on how to use the Mitro attack framework to fight a ransomware attack. Let's begin. 
Now, understanding what has been done before can help organizations better prepare for the next way in or the newest means of attack. That's why it's really important to know when an attack has been done, what are the steps that were involved and what can be done to mitigate at each and every attack step. Now, of course, in the MITRE ATT&CK framework org website as it lays down, it's got 14 techniques and its own sub-techniques. For the example that we're going to study is using the MITRE ATT&CK framework to deconstruct a real-world ransomware attack and not all the faces would be used in this example. Beginning with the first attack phase of a rans ransomware attack, Recon. During the initial phase, the attacker will scratch through the publicly available information about its intended target and launches a meta exploit listener to keep an ear on incoming connections. The attacker employed a simple phishing techniques such as fake email from an organization's IT admin, requests an update requesting the user to upgrade their version of, say, PuTTY. Uh, this upgrade was infected with malicious payload generator and that would eventually call home between the targeted machine and the attacker. Next one, initial access, phase two. Here, the threat actors now will try to navigate and better understand the company's or the organization's internal infrastructure. After running some advanced data and recon reports and exfiltrating the necessary information, the attackers will now try to remove their traces of their activity to avoid discovery. Next one, execution, attack phase three. Once the initial foothold is established, attackers will try to dig through the output directories to gain information like IP addresses and host names. For example, if, the, if your main domain controller, if not secured properly, unauthorized access can be devastating for your organization. Attackers can exploit vulnerabilities in Kerberos, the default authentication protocol for Windows, to pose as a legitimate user and also transfers into the network undetected. Attacks such as Golden Ticket and Pass the Hash are something you might want to search and how they work. Next stage, Persistence, Attack Phase 4. Persistence is often the key to a successful ransomware attack. Once the attacker establishes a parallel admin level access, they use malicious agents to create scheduled tasks that when live on the machine, they automatically try to reach out to the command and control center so that they can keep and maintain the persistence on the, their victim's network. Next, escalation, attack phase five. The name of the entire game is always privilege escalation because attackers will keep cracking open hash dumps and pulling out credentials in an attempt to navigate around the system. They perform various types of credential oriented operations and ultimately use this elevated access to navigate to where they want to dump or accurately upload their ransomware payload. Next, evasion, attack phase six. After initial access, the attacker's second priority is defense evasion. The ability to remain undetected is very critical. This is also where things get a little interesting as the compromised system has some covert defense mechanisms while the adversaries try their best to sneak around. For example, uh, to keep the things clean, attackers will remove any output directories, CSV files, and power scripts to eliminate any IOCs or indicator of compromise, which your endpoint tools can easily detect. So this is something very important from an attacker's perspective. Next one, phase seven, credential access. In an ransomware attack, it always, most of the time, targets privileged credentials that gives the adversary far-reaching administrative access to sensitive data and systems. So always be sure to have very strong password management policies in your organization. Next one, 
Phase 8. Lateral movement. Lateral movement consists of techniques that adversaries use to enter and control remote systems on a network. Following through their primary objective often requires exploring the network to find their target and subsequently gaining access to it. Reaching their objective often involves pivoting through multiple systems and accounts to gain am privileged access. And finally, phase 9, command and control. Command and control consists of techniques that the adversaries may use to communicate with systems under their control within a victim's network. Adversaries commonly attempt to mimic normal or expected traffic to avoid detection. There are many ways an adversary can establish command and control, or sometimes also called a C2, with various levels of stealth depending on victim's network structure and defenses. All right, and that was a brief introduction on malware analysis and how Mitre attack framework can be used to deconstruct a real world ransomware attack. And at the very least, share this video with your family and friends whom you think would benefit. And if you're looking for any cybersecurity training or consultation, I'll leave my email address down in the description so you can contact me. All right, with this, I'll end today's session. I hope you all have a great day ahead. Bye now.